So Cyrus, what an absolutely wonderful exhibit. And I am intrigued initially about the title, Black at Intersection. And so if we boil it down to the lowest common denominator, I think that we need a operational definition of blackness. Mm -hmm. What is blackness for you? Okay, well, the denominator is strong and high. Okay, okay first of all. <laughs> but what is blackness? Blackness, I can't define it. Okay. Um, blackness is a construct, right? And we can maybe agree that that's something that has been constructed yeah. in our society. Uh, black at intersection, and why the word intersection in the first place, is because we are many different things. And I am borrowing, of course, from Dr. Kimberly, Kimberly Crenshaw, Crenshaw, right? And her coining of the term intersectionality. Okay. So that we are black and, and women. We are black and, right. That's, that's a good way to put it. That, that, that would have been the next title, that was, well, black and. <laughs> and that was gonna be my next question, mm -hmm. um, the, intersect the intersectionality. And so why was it important for you to make sure that there were so many different identities of blackness represented in this beautiful exhibit. I love art. Okay. I love visual art. I've had a, a career as a performer. I, I, I like to say that even as a performer, I was practicing visual art with my body. Mm. And so mm -hmm. um, the point was to then show all of those diversities, those different voices, because often, when you go to galleries or you go to museums or when anything is under the aegis of black, often it's presented as one thing. Mm -hmm. Or often the, for blackness in particular, the trauma is shown. Yes, yes. But we wanted to show with this exhibition and anyone that comes to see it, you've seen it, you know, yeah. the joy, the, 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 the challenges, yeah. the, all of it that yeah. blackness is. So I love that. So earlier when we were meeting, you talked about the five P's mm -hmm. of taking in of art. Perspective. And, yeah, and of yeah, perspective. Yeah, yeah. And so can you walk us through those? And I'll, I'll try to do it briefly. Yeah, can you yeah, briefly yeah, yeah, can yeah. you briefly do that? For okay. Us? Okay. So what what Moses is discussing for those listening, um, I teach at the University of North Carolina at Greensboro. I'm a professor in the School of Dance. And when I teach choreography to the students there, I ask them to have an understanding of the five P's of perspective. Because mm -hmm. uh, if you're gonna create art, you should have that perspective. And those are position, purpose, process, practice, and presentation. Should I say them again? Yes. Position, meaning who are you, where are you? What, what, what intersection do you stand at? That's right. Right, in terms of, of position. Purpose is why are you doing it? Mm -hmm. and anybody can do something, but why? Uh, and then process is how do you get it done? Uh, practice is the, the way that you're living so that you can get it done, right? And then presentation is what manner are you uh, packaging that thing that you pre you, you, you're doing, right? So right now, in Black at Intersection, the presentation format is an art exhibition primarily photography, uh, looking at blackness through, through those figurative artworks. And so there, you have some audio elements, you have some uh, multimedia elements. Why was that important to be a part of this presentation? Yeah, I wanted, to, I wanted it to be diverse, intersectional, mm -hmm. in terms of discipline as well. Okay. So originally, although it's important to let artwork, let the process of artwork tell you what it's going to be, I yeah. always believe that, but originally I wanted it to be photography in conversation with other art disciplines because photography feels immediate mm. in my mind. I've been a lover of photography since the 90s and so that ability to capture a moment in photography feels different than when a painter is taking that time to, you know, by, by brush stroke, by brush stroke, a photo captures a moment right away. Okay. But then to have that in conversation with sculpture, to have it in conversation with, with film, mm -hmm. time-based work. So um, it then just became, I had to deal with who submitted the work. We had over 60 applicants. And so I had to deal with what actually came to us 
And so there were excellent voices in uh, Jasmine Best with her, her sculpture, sculptural work and her work with fabric, um, Jamison Curcio, uh, uh, tons of artists with, in terms of different voices, in terms of discipline. Okay, so museums mm -hmm. are traditionally known as society's tastemakers. They pretty much tell people, this is what you should appreciate and this, this has acceptance. How, how important is it that exhibits like this exist in American museums? Very important. So, you know, you said that, as I hear the question, that uh, museums and galleries shape the culture, Absolutely. the zeitgeist. Correct. Right? Correct. So, okay. Um, that means that someone's making a decision about what is, is and what isn't. Correct. And so being a curator as a black man, being a curator and being in uh, the position to create space for other artists mm -hmm. is, per when I talk about those five Ps, that's a strong purpose to have, to be able to um, create that kind of space. So I, that's why I love museums and galleries. And I believe it's absolutely important for black voices, bl not only the artists on the wall, but the people making the decisions like curators to be present. Okay. I'm going to switch slightly. Okay. Uh, your exhibit also has several books that are a part of it. Mm -hmm. um, I'm going to just go over some titles. Okay. And I want you to tell me how you that- did your homework. I did Is my it, homework, okay. sir. <laughs> I want you to tell me how that title resonates with you as an artist curator, mm -hmm. and then how that title is connected to the work. Okay. Okay. So first question, Souls Grown Deep. How has your soul grown deep in curating this. So everybody, he picked the one book. So there's, there's, <laughs> about, there's about 15 books that are spaced around the gallery yes. that come from my personal library about black art, uh, books by, about Jeffrey Holder, yes. even a book that I co-authored called Vital, Vital Grace. Grace, which now is now the next question. The titles. That's okay. the next one. I won't give away the titles. But he picked the one, Souls Grown Deep, that I didn't contribute, that Wendy Earl, yes. the, the uh, director of curations here at SICA, selected. So now what, what, what must I say about so, no, no, the, so the, the question <laughs> is, you as an artist, uh -huh. when you're curating, how has your personal soul, how, how mm -hmm. has it grown deep creating spaces for other artists like yourself? I don't know how deep my soul grows. <laughs> I just know that my soul grows yeah, uh, deep, yeah. wide. Yeah. Um, I, I think seeing the submissions and the, the perspectives that these artists have, I would have never thought about it. That's what I love about art. Yeah. Because you yeah. go see it and you're like, how the, how the H, yeah. did they make that? Yeah, like, yeah. how did this happen? Where did, where did, what made them think of that? How did Jasmine Best That's right. make this work? That's right. I don't know if you could see all the way behind me, but Destiny Adelakan and what, what makes an artist process the ways that they do. So um, I grow from that. That's why we should see art, because all of our souls will grow deep. But isn't that, well, that was going to be, I mean, you're really doing my work for me. Isn't that part of it that you get a chance to curate this and that in some way all of our souls grow deep. Like when I see the photo of that elder right there, absolutely, she is the elder, the mother, the grandmother, the great grandmother in every black community that I've ever been a part of. And I mean, that is growing up on Long Island. That is uh, having friends who were from New York City. That mm -hmm. is living in DC. Can they see it? Can they, I can't tell if well, they well, can well, see well, it. Well, 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 well. That's yeah. all right. Well, it's, be, it's by Kellyanne Bob, the, okay. the, the photo that you're talking about, yeah. by Kellyanne Bob. And I'm, I'm so glad that you mentioned that one in particular, yeah. was because I, in this idea of intersectionality and showing di diverse black, diversity within blackness, yeah. I needed my elders. That's right. I needed to have my elders. And that image of, de uh, of, of Kellyanne's grandmother, uh, Kellyanne is from Trinidad. I had uh, to have the, the, the representation of the Caribbean. Yeah, yeah. And it was so important to see this woman's image and, and the way that she is looking at you directly and showing power in, in her, uh, her gaze yeah. was so important. Well, well, when I see it, what immediately leaps 
is uh, the, the principle Ubuntu. Mm. I, I am because we are, we, we are, are I therefore we are. I am, or I am only because we are. We, none of this exists without the elders. That's right, absolutely. Yeah. So she had to be there. Yeah. So I would dare say that all, if, if you get a chance to take in this exhibit, that some part of your soul will grow deep. It, it'll, it will expand. I like that. Thank you, sir. Thank you for yeah. that. All right, so next, vital grace. Yes. Uh, so what is vital about grace and how does that show up in this collection? My goodness, so I gotta talk about the book. You gotta talk right? about the book. So I, I mentioned that I love uh, visual art. I've always loved photography as a child. Yeah. When I knew that I liked the performing arts, the first experience with the performing arts was seeing The Wiz on Broadway that my mother took me to see. And I, I knew I was in love. I knew I was going to do that somehow. I didn't know how at that time. But would go to libraries okay. and look for images of dancers and actors, and I wouldn't always find them. But I would sometimes see a dance book, and they'd have Merce Cunningham, uh, Nureyev, um, uh, Barishnikov, mm -hmm. uh, white bodies. And that's OK. I needed to see black bodies, right? And so my goal in, uh, gosh, I was still dancing in Alvin Ailey when I started working on this book. I, I worked with a photographer, Joanne Savio, to co-author Vital Grace, The Black Male Dancer. And so the intention was to have a coffee table art book that showed images of black male dancers that some young person right. could see one day and realize that they had that, that, that grace was in them, that vital uh, grace was within them, okay. and they could realize their goals, perhaps in some way similar to what I had the fortune of being able to do. So I will say, not even knowing that story, that's why I don't like to over-prepare, the reason why the work that I do at the museum is so important is because I have a very similar story. Uh, Radio City Music Hall, Every Christmas, we went for the Christmas Spectacular yes. with the Rockettes. I will never forget, and this is, it's, it both haunts me and it motivates me. I lean over to my mother, and we're trying to find out which of the Rockettes are black. Mm. Until you have that moment, you don't understand that you don't exist. Here's a show that we see year after year, and you're talking about if I'm eight, this is like the early 80s, or is it 79, 80, 81, and you're trying to figure out well, she could be light enough to be black and you don't see yourself. That moment made me want to make sure, and I think when you see what we're trying to do at the North Carolina Museum of Art, uh, making a place of belonging and joy, it is so that no kid ever in his or her, their life, ever has to have that moment of, well, I don't see myself on the stage, I don't see myself in the films, I don't see myself represented in the movement, and I don't hear myself in the music. That is the fundamental thing that guides me every day. So the change is happening, right? Yes. So I think of the Rockettes now. I think you can see yes. a, a, a difference in what we're seeing in the Rockettes. I'm also thinking about your programming that you're doing at the museum, in yeah. uh, North Carolina Museum of the Arts. I had the fortune uh, uh, last year, it must have been, in the fall, yes. to see Anik. Uh, Austin, and am I saying her name correctly? There was a Melissa Fenley solo. Yes. And you had the programming. Of, uh, American Dance Festival. Yes, yes, American Dance Festival with Jody Nimmerichter. Yay. Yes. Jody, we love you. Yes. And, but you had, what was interesting about that, I didn't see all of them, but okay. it was a diverse cast of performers. It wasn't the same. There was a black woman that performed the solo. It was a Sunday. Right. And then that afternoon, so that a afternoon male, was a white, white male. male. So that idea of diversity being mm. um, fluid in the expression of art yeah. is important. Yes. You know. And the fact of, so one, that was the very first time, and um, I'm, I'm humbled and I'm, I'm grateful to say it's the very first time that the American Dance Festival ever had uh, their season outdoors. Nice. So, you know, nice. we're activating the galleries, we're activating the museum. But for persons who want to engage with the art, but they can make sense of it with their bodies, yeah. we are getting a chance to represent, or I would say, um, give air, give breath to 
works that at times, depending upon how you've been uh, cultured and, and how you approach life, that can be very static. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, you said you were talking about souls growing deep. Yeah. Um, one of the most rewarding moments in this uh, time, now, so the exhibition is here from November 19th of um, 2021 through April 17th of 22. And so the opening was Incredible. lovely. Yeah, 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 yeah. That, yeah. Was, that was the best. That was a, a moment. But we have had events peppered throughout, you know, and, and different topics. We've had a film screening. We'll do a, a book club um, reading. But there was one moment called an evening with the creative class. And I've offered an evening with the creative class in North Carolina for a number of years, but first time here. And I led a improv with everyone that was attending. So it's just people, just humans, yeah. the people that came to the event, not, not just dancers, not just artists, just folks. And I prompted them through this improv and to be in this huge 6,000 square foot gallery and seeing everyone responding and moving right, to right. the art. I was like, I, this is from the Bronx. I was like, oh, snap. <laughs> it, was like, it was just incredible yeah. and beautiful to see. And that's what art does yeah. for us. We just had that moment, and it surprised me. We just uh, brought West African drumming with uh, Robert J. Corbett of the Kaumba uh, Community Collective. We just had our first uh, drum circle mm. on Sunday, Saturday or Sunday, Sunday. I thought I might get 20 people. They showed up, didn't they? And to see children yeah. of all races and identities just begin to move, to see uh, multicultural persons playing djembes, mm -hmm. and literally to see community and create creativity while paying homage to African heritage. Yes. I think that is the work that we were sent to the planet to do. And, and for me, I was on such a high, and then people immediately started emailing, think about COVID, think about what everything has gone on in America, think about everything that has gone on in our lives and how our lives, uh, how we've lived life behind the mask, mm -hmm. to see people free enough, now mind you everyone, they had on their mask, but to see people free enough to feel, uh, my favorite image, there was a woman who had a dog, and we kept seeing her behind the glass outside dancing. Then we saw her come around, and she asked security, can you watch my dog? And when I say this white woman got it, like, so you have, like, this is at the end of it, she had her scarf, and she was just alive. And I think what we do, I think the blessing and the opportunity of what we get a chance to do, we get a chance to bring life to American museums through movement, through Absolutely. dance, through poetry. And, so, and it shouldn't be separate. It shouldn't it should be, not be separate. Uh, compartmentalized. So I, like I mentioned, I love museums and galleries mm -hmm. and I love performing arts. I lean into these days, you know, especially as I'm getting older, I lean into how do all of these diverse experiences in my own life as a curator and as a creative, but then just in terms of how I, what lens okay. I am applying to how I view art, that the body and how the body engages with art is absolutely important. So that you don't just go to a museum and look at a work, stand in front of the work and look at it and then leave. Like yeah. it's, you know, there, there's, there's, there's dance in how you structure the, uh, the exhibition. Absolutely. Absolutely. The flow of the images in the, in the exhibition. The flow, the height, all yes, of that. Yes, absolutely important. That's dance. So I'm going to just throw out a theme. All right, so let's talk, let's start with lens. Mm -hmm. So in the show, yes. there are four themes. And lens was important because, again, that idea of perspective, like how are you reading something? How are you seeing it? The reason why there's, blackness is not a monolith, yeah. the reason why it is not is because there's no way that everyone can see every black person as the same thing. Yeah. So lens, Although I think people do try. They try I, hard. I, I, I do think that people try. People try hard. Yeah. But... Um, 
people are also defying that and reshaping that uh, as we speak. Yeah. You know, these, all these artists in the show. But um, why Lens? I had Lens in the show, um, that theme of Lens was looking at the current moment. Like, how are mm. we seeing the current moment in our world? Mm -hmm. There's mm -hmm. a lot going on. The pandemic, mm -hmm. Black Lives Matter, yeah. um, the Me Too movement, education, the 1619 Project. Yeah. There's so many things where people are perhaps looking at it through, a, and looking at it through a binary lens. Okay. I was right? going to bring that up. Like either you either are or you aren't. Correct. You know, it is and, or it ain't. And that's a continuum. Correct. It's a continuum. Correct. It's a spectrum. And so, you know, we have to understand that as we look through the lens at, at art, let's just say looking at the images in this show. Okay. You can make a meal for someone, but you cannot taste it for them. Correct. Everybody's going to see it and read it differently. Yeah, yeah. So stay there. Um, I, I took this quote. The black body is a site for reclaiming blackness, mm -hmm. defining ourselves with ourselves, black bodies that defy Eurocentric, patriarchal, and then I stopped writing because I wanted Say to that hear. first part because it was great. Those were my words. I like them. Those are so words. Okay. Um, <laughs> one of the themes falls under the black body as a site for, site, S-I-T-E, mm -hmm. as a site for reclaiming Blackness. So mm -hmm. let's let's start break with this that down. part. Right. So let's. Why would blackness need to be reclaimed? Black bodies have been uh, co-opted, appropriated, and misrepresented in myriad ways in our society. Mm -hmm. From I'm, sports. From in sports, uh, the uh, stereotypes and Absolutely. entertainment. Absolutely. Um, why is it that it, we're, we're ubiquitous, actually, in a lot of ways, where many places, I, I remember being in Germany in the 90s touring as a, as a dance artist and hearing the Fugees coming out of somebody, just somewhere in like Germany. Mm -hmm. And that this, this idea that blackness is there to be consumed, mm -hmm. our labor, our bodies. Mm -hmm. And so the artists, why we have a theme of, of the body is that, uh, and, and, and like, you, like we say, uh, claiming our bodies for, with our, our own bodies is because we have to take that agency. We don't need to have someone tell us what our bodies should look like. And our bodies don't have to adhere to any European standards. Mm -hmm. There is beauty in blackness as black is. Why is it important for us to define ourselves? Like, like, like mm -hmm. how prevalent mm -hmm. is this notion of all parts of black lives are often told, whether it is Broadway, mm -hmm. like you and I have discussed, or it is the dance world, or it is sports. Um, let's not talk about what's going on in football right now. Um, how important is it for people to understand that oftentimes our lives, our beings, our careers are viewed as opposite of, or only in the context of what it means against white lives. That's great. I, that's great because, you know, there's something, as you were saying it and you mentioned, and these, these were words that, I, you know, I wrote for the show, but this idea of defining. Yeah. Uh, today, I feel like we don't need to define. Okay, wow. We, we don't need to, what, define means what? We just are. Just be it, just right? Be. We are, we've been it. Yeah. So why, why define? Because no one asked whiteness to be defined. Of course, the, the way that, that construct. Correct does not even represent white people correctly. Mm -hmm. You know, it makes whiteness, um, what is the word? It's like it's not there, it's, it, it's invisible, Okay. right? But blackness should not exist in con contrast or comparison to whiteness. It's not, it's not about that. And again, that's why it's important to look at the intersectionalities of blackness. And can you just give, and thank you for going back to that, if you don't know the work of Dr. Kimberly Crenshaw, she talks about intersectionality. And can you give your definition of it, your interpretation of that, so that everyone is on the same page? What, what little I understand about it in my own research is Dr. Kimberly Crenshaw is uh, working in the legal field. And it had to do with a woman at one point who was suing an employer mm -hmm. because for discrimination against her as uh, a black woman. 
And it's and both of those identities. Both of them. And so they were saying they were saying that we're not doing that. We're not discriminating you a, a, against you as a woman because we do X. But she was saying that the difference is the white women are in there are not experiencing the same type of discrimination. Neither are the black men. And so intersectionality is important because it is the different ways that one shows up in a space. Right. And so, um, and now we're getting ready to get to critical race, which erases the idea of colorblindness. And so we, I don't want to speak for you, but we can never walk into a space and not be perceived to be black. The only time we can walk into a space and not be perceived to be black is when we walk into black spaces. spaces. Absolutely. I am imagining that both you and I, as, as curators, as artists, we are creating space for blackness in a range of areas where maybe blackness is not or black, more blackness is needed, whatever. Um, so my question for you is how do you negotiate being the black voice in the room? I think that's a great question. I don't ever see myself as the black voice in the room, although I understand the divine responsibility. A, how about a black voice in the room? I'm usually the only one. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm not going to say, I, I, I don't see myself as the black voice. And this is why that's important. Because white people don't see themselves as the white voice. Yeah, they right. just do true their job. That. True, true. My job is to give North Carolinians the best programming. And what I'm doing is I'm expanding the fact that black voices, brown voices were not included but I don't take on the responsibility of, because if I take on that responsibility. That's a labor, that's a nut, right. And no one Correct. else is expected to do that. Correct. And so if you're seeing more black programming, it is not because I am black, it is because if you look at the demographics, 28, 29% of the, of the state is black. Yes. And so I can't have 90% um, of the programming mm -hmm. be, uh, represent one culture and yet 30% of the state be black. I, that means I got to lift our programming to reflect the demographics of That's the state. Right. And so I, I, don't take, I, I don't take that response, I don't take that as a burden. I see it as part of my being. I like that. So is that, and I saw it as part of the exhibit, is that existing on the margins? Is that like, what is that? Mm -hmm. um, or, or, or how does your exhibit allow people to be present wherever they are, even if that is as a marginalized yeah, identity yeah. by some. That's a good one. I, I really, um, I, I almost want to ask you to ask it again because you, you're saying a, a lot there. So the thing is, it, it, there's a book by, I believe the uh, uh, author is Kevin Quashi. I, I may be wrong, but the book is called um, The Sovereignty of Quiet. Hmm. Yeah, you got to check me on this, fact check. But it's talking about, at one point in the book, they're discussing this idea of the volume of being, the audible volume of blackness. Mm. So does it mean to be black? Does it mean that you have to be black in a forward, you know, um, you know uh, Black Lives Matter, and, you know, all the time? That could be exhausting. It is exhausting. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm black when I'm home by myself. I don't, I don't change. I'm, I'm going to be black. That's it. Um, but at the same time, I seek to dismantle the, con the, the racialized binary construct of blackness. It's, that's, it's a different thing. That's the, that's a, that's a, that's um, the absent, a that's dysfunctional. Yes. Yeah. So black, there's a beauty in blackness in all the diversity. Pe folks from Africa are completely different from black folks from America from, and from folks from the Caribbean. Correct. And so just when you talk about the system of binaries, you're talking about um, presence and absence. So usually in Western culture, presence would be white, absence would be black. Presence would be uh, hetero, absence would be homo. And so, or homo or queer. And so what ends up happening is you have 
one only exists as absent of the other. And usually with cultures, people think that people, you're either black or you're white, or even if you're black, you're black is just one thing. And right. what you're saying is, it's many things. It, it's many different it's things. Many things. So I want you to end by telling us your hope for people who come in terms of your five P's. Ready? Yeah. Oh, oh I got to do one for each of the five yep. P's? Take 45 seconds. Positions. So this is, okay. Yeah, what do you right. want them to get? I hope that each person that comes to see this show can understand it and appreciate it from their position, their mm. positionality. You don't have to be anything to anything different than what you are to appreciate it. Okay. Um, purpose. I think that it's important, and I hope that folks can see the purpose of this show. That it is it is meant for everyone, but it is also especially meant for Black folks to see themselves. That that purpose is there, yeah. but it is really for all of us. Um, the same way that supposedly... Oh, we got two Ps, but go ahead. I got, yeah. Okay, uh, <laughs> we got three the, more. The same way that American museums are supposed to be for everyone, right. although... But, at, but they don't often, but, right. But, but they don't often. Right. But we don't ask, we, we don't expect that only if we go into an Italian gallery that that's only for Italians, or we go into another gallery that it's only for American museums or museums are for everyone. So it's this exhibit, although it highlights the black experience and black yes, narratives, yes, correct? Correct. So okay. then that is why the third P okay. is about process. And what I hope for folks is that we could shift our process, shift the way we're doing things, shift the way that we are engaging with each other and not only engaging with each other on this kind of um, cancel culture, you know, like you didn't, you didn't say, you said and instead of or, so now I'm going to block you on it. Mm. Yeah. So anyway, so can I keep going with the piece? Because you, you asked for it. Yeah. So practice, um, again, what I hope for people, again, is really kind of see, to see holistically. You know, when I think of practice, I'm thinking of how do I live in the world? Mm. Like, what do I need to do to live in the world? What do I eat? How do I treat people, et cetera? So my hope is that we can maybe be a little more holistic about our practice and that the arts are not a separate thing that only rich people do. That the arts are, um, uh, should be accessible for all of us, which then leads to the last one, which is presentation. Mm -hmm. And I would hope that museums and galleries would continue to um, uh, practice inclusivity mm -hmm. and practice um, can I add the word belonging? Belonging. Belonging. And inclusivity. Absolutely. And I hope they will practice hiring me as a curator. How okay. about that? That's that last one. We got to remember that okay. one. And so I will say, <laughs> um, as a black man of black men and women, to come into a space where I see myself reflected on the wall, and you've got to remember, the awakening for me is in Radio City. Uh, this has been so meaningful. Excellent. To be able to interview you. So thank and you I've for the opportunity. It. Thank you. All right. All right. Thank you, everyone.